On CBS, you've heard Jack Benny, Bergen and McCarthy, still waiting with a variety of entertainment, are Rocky Jordan, Horace Height, our Miss Brooks, The Whistler, and Red Skelton. Now, Del Monte Foods brings you a world of adventure with... Rocky Jordan. I'd been trying hard for some sleep in my room up over the tambourine, but the song that echoed up and down the dark Cairo street outside wasn't helping. I got out of bed and went to the window. The singer, dressed in cap and uniform of the French Foreign Legion, leaned against a building right below me. Hey! Hey down there! Go home! Oh, monsieur, ça tombe en suite! No parley, Francais. Just move it along. Allez, allez. Après une autre refrain, monsieur. Oh, mon tendre. Let a guy get some sleep, will you? You want me to come down there? Dad. He finally broke it off, and I got back to sleep. Only it wasn't my night. The second time I came out of it quick with the sound of a siren. I shoved the window open this time to see the police limousine of Captain Sam Sabaya pull up, and the bright headlights pointed out the uniform of the French Foreign Legion again. This time, sprawled face down at the curb. Del Monte, the brand you trust for flavor in so many good foods. Yes, Del Monte, the best-liked brand of canned fruits and vegetables in the whole wide world takes you now to the Café Tambourine in Cairo, gateway to the ancient East, where modern adventure and intrigue unfold against a backdrop of antiquity. Tonight's Rocky Jordan story, A Song in the Night. It started around two in the morning when a fellow in French Foreign Legion uniform woke me up with his singing below my window. The next thing that got me up was Sabaya's police siren. And the look this time showed the same uniform sprawled unmoving in the street. I put on some clothes and went down. Keep back now, all of you, keep back. He's dead, is he, Sam? As you see from the knife wound in his neck, is it possible that you have seen this man before? I only made out the uniform from my upstairs window. We had a few words a while ago. What about? Well, he woke me up with his singing, that's all. Singing, Jordan? Yeah, I guess he'd had a few drinks. I got back to sleep, and that's the last I saw of him. Then you can tell me nothing of this? Well, his singing may not have been too good, but it wasn't bad enough to kill him over. Jordan, I have failed to find your humor the least bit amusing. What's the identification say? His pockets are empty. And do not make it your concern. It's just the blonde hair, his fair features, and the stocky build. Doesn't look much like a Frenchman to me, more like a Swede. That means nothing. All different nationalities are found in the French foreign relation. Yeah, but the fellow I talked to seemed to be French. His handling of the language is perfect. Oh, so now you are in authority on the French language. And the clothes don't fit any too well, either. Uh, Captain, uh, if I may offer my services... Who are you? I am Dr. Shamar. My offices are close by. I was returning from a night call when I saw the crowd gathered here. I see. Well, look if you like, Dr. Shamar, but I fear you are much too late. Uh, uh, the knife wound is enough. But further tests will be made. Mm. Uh, Captain, I um, could not help overhearing your conversation with Mr. Jordan. Uh, you do not know who this man is? No, but the body will be identified. But don't be too sure, Sam. I got a hunch. Never mind, Jordan. I regret I did not arrive sooner. However, death came quickly. If uh, that is all, then, Captain... Thank you, Dr. Shemar. I will require your services no longer. Nor yours, Jordan. The ambulance showed up before long, and the crowd melted away. I'd already gone back to my room, wondering about a man who sings one minute and gets killed the next. Well, it wasn't my puzzle, but the strange song he'd sung there kept ringing through my mind. Well, the murder story made page one in the morning papers. It filled up the mystery of the man's identity. One of the police still didn't know. That was enough to bring the crowd swarming around and into the tambourine. 
Tourists looking for the excitement and intrigue of the quaint city called Cairo. Like the elderly female school teacher at a front table, sipping a lime coke and seeing life. Oh, it's disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. The way people flock to the scene of a sordid murder. Oh, I say, proprietor, are you the one who talked to him? To who, lady? Why, the legionnaire, of course. The man who was knifed at your very doorstep. I wouldn't know. Get you another coat? Oh, oh, no, no. My, the whole affair has quite turned my stomach. A motley lot these legionnaires just flee from some ghastly crime. Oh, look at this. I pulled myself away and began noticing another character in the crowd. A man in cutaway and white vest with well-clipped beard who listened intently to the chatter around him. As I stepped behind the bar, he pushed his way through and sat down. We cannot escape it here, can we, senor? All this conjecture about which they know nothing. Well, does anybody, mister? <laughs> Agreed, senor. I am Count Umberto. What will you have, Count? Uh, uh, Madera, if you please. Uh, hey, uh. But, uh, tell me, it is true that the police have made no progress in solving last night's affair? You'll have to ask them. But, senor... Why do they spend so much time trying to learn who the man was or why he was killed? They get paid for something like that. Granted. But after all, life is quite cheap. If you look at it that way. Well, really, it is. Millions upon millions have been killed in recent wars. Why should we bother about this one? I don't know. Except that he was alive yesterday. Ah, yes, yes. You alone talked with him, did you not, before the murder? I talked to somebody. Ah, well, such is the inscrutability of man. Kill many in war, then trouble yourself about one who was probably worth little. Oh, but your health now, senor. And we shall forget the unfortunate man. It went on like that for the rest of the day. Everybody asking about something I wanted to forget. By evening, I had enough of it and got out. I wandered over through the Izbikia, then down the Sharia Solomon Pasha and away from the crowds. Then I was walking across from Shepherd's Hotel, past houses that touched the sidewalk, when something stopped me. The song was coming from one of the houses. The same strange melody I heard the Frenchman sing under my window the night before. I saw the girl then, through an open doorway, bent over the keys of an upright piano. How long have you been standing there? Oh, not long. The song brought me. Oh, you like it? Anna likes it, too. Where did you learn it, Anna? Why, Andre taught it to me. Who's Andre? We're oh, a French legionnaire. It was so pretty the way he sang it. I do not know the meaning of the words. Oh, my Andre. Uh, this legionnaire, when did you see him last? Oh, about two o'clock last night, I guess. Was he really a Frenchman or something else? What do you mean? Was he French or some other nationality? Well, of course he was French. He told me he was from the countryside, oh, around love. Light hair? Light? No, no, dark hair. Oh, Andre was homesick. That is what made him remember the song. But why are you asking? I heard him sing the song last night, too. Oh? Somebody was killed after that. The police think it was Andre. He, he's dead? Oh, no. Oh, he's such a nice boy. I think it was somebody else. A switch was pulled somewhere. You can help me prove it, Anna. How? By coming with me to police headquarters. Oh, no, no, the police, no, no. Well, just to tell them the man was a Frenchman. Maybe you could look at the body and identify it. So, you are with the police? No, Anna, I'm just trying to help. Oh, well, I will not go there. Oh, do not well, ask me. They wouldn't me. hold you, not if you set things straight for them. You've got to, Anna. Well, if you will promise... Anna, me... look out. <laughs> As we whirled, a knife flashed in from the doorway and buried itself in the piano close to Anna's head. I was out the door in time to see a flapping Arab robe around the corner, and I followed her. The chase led down a side street and wound through an open vegetable bazaar, just holding for the night. I was gaining till my foot hit a lettuce streak. I hit the ground rolling, and when I came up, the assailant was out of sight. Well, I gave it up and went back to Anna, but when I got there, she was gone. So I went to headquarters alone. <laughs> Jordan, you feel quite sure, then, that the legionnaire described by the girl is the same who woke you last night with his singing? It stands to reason, Sam. The song went with him. Anna said he was a Frenchman with dark hair. Mm. If this is true, the legionnaire's clothes were obviously changed to the dead man. Sure, to put you off the trail. Somebody doesn't want him identified. But where does that put Andre? Well, 
probably killed, too. Jordan, about this girl... Oh, you can't blame her for running away, Sam. She was scared. Nevertheless, someone feared what she might tell. If she knows what is the, the bottom of this, she's in great danger. I will send men to find her and protect her. You've got something in the knife thrower, Sam. He may have been wearing robes, but he wasn't an Arab. Nobody ever heard an Arab whistle. Mm -hmm. As you say. This is a serious matter, Jordan. Any ideas? No, except that it is the third death this month of persons whom we have un unable to identify. Neither have the immigration officials. So plenty's been going on, huh? What were the others like? The first was a Mexican, the second a Hindu. No identification. The customs office could give no help. Sounds like illegal entrance. Mm, perhaps. It seems important for the killer that the police have no idea who these men are. Otherwise, the motives behind the killings and their purpose might become known. Sam, uh, I know how you can find out who killed those men. How, Jordan? Well, uh, it won't be easy, but uh, suppose somebody claimed he knew the identity of just one of those men. Mm -hmm. More than that, he knew the man's background. Maybe the killer would come to get that somebody. He would? But, Jordan, I cannot allow you... All to... you've got to do is to get one of your men to act the part. Oh. <laughs> For a moment, I thought... <laughs> uh... You thought I'd act the part. Mm. Sam, where'd you ever get an idea like that? Sam grinned, and so did I. He'd used me for bait before, so I moved out of headquarters, and pretty soon I was wandering the native section into the dens where anything goes for a price. I dropped the word that I knew who the dead man was, that he wasn't a French legionnaire, that he was in Egypt illegally, and that my information was worth plenty of money. Then I went back to the tambourine, got my gun from under the counter, checked it, and waited for the developments that I knew would come. Del Monte Foods is presenting tonight's adventure with Rocky Jordan. Next time you can take a few minutes to sit down and relax, here's the way to make those minutes count in healthful refreshment. Pour yourself a long, lazy, thirst-quenching glass of Del Monte pineapple juice. You've got something there, Larry. I know I certainly look forward to enjoying Del Monte pineapple juice after I've been working hard around the house. Yes, that's the kind of sunny, sparkling flavor that makes things look brighter, all right. And you couldn't ask for better refreshment than this naturally tart, sweet, healthful juice. Del Monte pineapple juice is rich in the flavor of superb pineapples, picked thumping ripe. And the same extra luscious flavor you get in all styles of Del Monte pineapple. Sliced, crushed... Chunks, tidbits, or juice. Well, I know I can expect a raid on the Del Monte pineapple juice any time my family gets thirsty, morning, noon, or night. That's why I keep several cans handy all the time. Try Del Monte pineapple juice for cool, tempting, tart, sweet refreshment, friends. Buy it tomorrow. Buy plenty. <laughs> And now, we take you back to Cairo and tonight's Rocky Jordan story, A Song in the Night. Well, it was my own idea to set myself up as the pigeon that would smoke out the killer, so there was no backing out now. I stayed in the tambourine with the customers, keeping the gun with me. Closing time came and nothing had happened. When everybody was gone, I cut all but the back lights, slammed and locked the alley door, and went up front to do the same there. I just reached the door when a figure moved in the shadows outside. My hand gripped the gun in my pocket, and I drew back, waiting. Good evening, Mr. Jordan. Oh. Dr. Shamar. What's this about? My being up at this hour? <laughs> It is always the life of a doctor, just as it was last night. Oh, yes, yeah, sure. I'm sorry. I, um, I simply drove by to inquire if the police have had any luck in tracking down the killer of the man we saw here in the street last night. Oh, not yet, Doctor. Uh, it has been a long day. Do you mind if I come in for a little something? Oh, I was just closing, but... Oh, well, come on in. Thank you. Nasty business, that killing. 
nasty business. Oh, hold it a second. Hello, tambourine. A little jumpy, Jordan. Who's this? I introduced myself with the knife. The one you threw at the girl? I got another one. Every bit is good. You play things smart and you won't have to use it. That's what they tell me. You're supposed to know all about the guy um, somebody killed last night. I found out some things. How much do you want to forget it? I'll tell you. Just name the place. What's his name? Who was he? It takes a price, Buster. Any place but here. Have it your way, then, Jordan. I'll be seeing you. Oh, wait a minute. Hello. Uh. Mr. Jordan, uh, that call, could it be... It was, Dr. Shimon. Uh, I did not realize the gravity of the situation. It is possible the killer will come here? Yeah, it's possible. Now will you have to drink? Oh, well, um, it is getting late. Uh, perhaps another time. Uh, good night. Uh, good night, Mr. George. I figured I was too hot an article to be around. I locked the door behind Dr. Shamar's retreating figure and went back through the dim cafe and up the balcony steps to my room. I'd no more than opened the door when I knew somebody was there. Come in, Georgian. Sam, what are you doing here? Is it not the duty of the police to give protection? But you can't be here. You'll spoil everything. You place little faith in me, Georgian. Look, if the killer knows you're here, he'll know I've been lying about this whole business. He knows it's just a trick to get him out into the open. No one knows I am here. I had but to disguise myself as your head cook. Uh, I don't know, Sam. Jordan, you might be interested to learn that we have picked up the girl, Anna, and are holding her in protective custody. Well, that's something. Also, identification has come through on one of the dead men, the Hindu who was killed earlier. Oh, who was he? The name is not important, but he was connected with the narcotics ring. Possibly the other two were also. Yeah, that could explain why no passports. All illegal entrance. Oh, but why the killing, Sam? That is what we must learn. Switch off the lights now. We will wait out the night. I still didn't like Sam's way, but we settled down in a dark room. Sam sat erectly on the edge of the bed, I leaned a chair against the wall. Sam puffed for a while on an Egyptian cigarette, shielding the tip. Then he stashed it, and we stayed quiet. Maybe it was loss of sleep from the night before, or just the waiting. Anyhow, I dozed off. When my eyes opened, I knew a sound had done it. Sam had heard it, too. Hmm. The scrape of a footstep somewhere. And all at once it came, the glint of a knife through the open window. <laughs> As Sam reeled back, I got to the window in time to see a shadow moving fast across the roof to the fire escape. My shots were wild, and he kept going over the side. Jordan! Jordan, after him. Do not let him escape. But you're hurt, Sam. No, no. The killer is all that matters. His knife was meant for me. I can't leave Jordan, I command you. Nothing doing, Sam. I'm getting you to a hospital. The ambulance made it in record time. I stayed with Sam till I knew his shoulder wound wasn't too serious. And they took him, still protesting, to a hospital bed. So our bait scheme was licked, now that the killer surely knew the police were in on it. Well, the morning papers did it again. The story even topped the squabbles of the royal family with headlines. And this time I had to put on extra help to handle the tambourine crowd. The female school teacher had another lime coke. Why, say, proprietor, that knife which wounded the police captain, uh, was it uh, quite large? Oh, big and sharp, and it went in deep, lady. Oh. I'll gladly give you all the details. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, I'm not at all interested. I dare. I wonder who the killer will try next. Oh, no. Another repeat customer was the perfumed Italian, Count Umberto. And more such excitement, senor, and you could raise your prices. Yeah, I could do without it, Count. I dare say you could. You were a child to think it would work. What would work? Your plan, yours and Sevais. Did you really think you could make the killer believe that you knew something? Maybe I do know something. <laughs> oh, no. The one who called you last night should have seen that. You're up on a lot of things, aren't you? The common knowledge. The papers, those babbling tongues. Just how does it concern you so much? But it does not. It means nothing. Yeah, like you said yesterday. Only you keep talking about it. Senor, surely you do not suspect me. Oh, <laughs> oh dear, this is delightful. He made it a joke, but I noticed his exit wasn't too graceful. I followed him through the cafe to the street and saw him get into a cab and pull away. I hailed another cab stationed up the block and made a quick bargain for the driver to follow. 
The following was almost too easy. Count Umberto's cab slowed for every native and goat and camel on the street. Now, nothing was making sense. Something else that irritated me was the way that song stayed in my mind. The one Andre had sung and then Anna. And all at once I knew it wasn't just in my mind. It was coming from the front seat. Hey, cabby. Uh, uh, what now, Fendi? Where did you learn that song? Oh, the song? Uh, I cannot seem to forget it. Uh, but if it bothers you... No, no, just tell me where you heard it. Uh, perhaps one of my passengers was humming it. Oh, a French legionnaire? Uh, no, uh, but someone else. I am trying to think. Oh, keep trying. How about an Italian count? Why, uh, yes, sir. Sure, the count heard Andre singing it just before he pulled the big switch in the murder. The tune stuck with him, too. Uh, Fendi, am I supposed to understand you? Uh, just keep following that taxi. Don't let it out of your sight. It is our bargain. Uh, wait, no, it was not the count, but someone else. Oh, I remember very well now. Who, then? Someone else, yes. I remember two nights ago, very late, sir. I was standing at my post near the tambourine waiting for a fare, but there were no fares. Oh, go on, Cabby, I... tell me. But it was so quiet, and I was feeling very sorry for myself. And then I heard it, very softly, as though the man did not even know he was humming. Na da 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 Go on, go on. Da, da. Over and over, I saw the man standing in a doorway as though waiting for something. I was puzzled, but it was not for me to ask. But who? I Get to the point. Me. Why, it was the good doctor whose office was close by, Dr. Shamar. Shamar, of course. Turn around, driver. For the Fendi, the cab which we follow. Forget it, turn around. He obliged with a U-turn on two wheels, and we doubled back the way we'd come. And five minutes later, I was on the second floor of a building, only three blocks from the tambourine, and at Dr. Shamar's door. It was after hours, but a skeleton key got me in, and I started scratching around. The outer office didn't turn up anything, so I went on inside. There, a bottom drawer of his desk gave up a money box. It was locked, but I finally got it cracked open, and it held plenty of money. Not Egyptian pounds, but foreign stuff. The pesos of Mexico, the rupees of India, the kroner of Sweden. The exact kind of money to represent each of the three dead men. And there, I knew I had my answer. <laughs> In just a moment, Rocky Jordan returns to conclude tonight's story. Friends, maybe you think you've enjoyed pineapple before. But just wait till you try that unusual, extra tempting style of Del Monte pineapple, Del Monte pineapple chunks. Now you can buy them all over the West, and they're wonderful. Yes, absolutely wonderful. Big, juicy wedges cut from tender, double-thick slices of full-ripe tropic pineapple. They're about one inch wide and one inch long. Just a generous bite size for easy serving, easy eating. You'll heap them high in sherbet glasses for dessert, or bring them on for breakfast, luscious and refreshing in their own sparkling syrup. And can't you ladies just picture how different and delicious these golden chunks would look on a cake or in a gelatin salad? Why, there are all kinds of ways to enjoy this handy style. And every one of them is specially tasty, too. Because Del Monte pineapple chunks have the same superb, tart-sweet flavor you get in all five styles of Del Monte pineapple. Remember, I'm talking about chunks. Del Monte pineapple chunks. Don't miss them. Ask your grocer tomorrow. Back now to Rocky Jordan for the conclusion of tonight's story. Well, all it took was a song, the kind that stick in people's minds when they hear it, to lead me to Dr. Shamar's office and the whole answer. I decided to put the money back where I'd found it and leave the rest to the police. I just got the box closed. Observe the knife, Mr. Jordan. It came close enough to see, Dr. Shamar. Shall I finish him now, Doctor? In a moment, Arno. But keep your knife ready. What's the matter? No Arab robes this time, Arno? No whistle like the time you tried for Anna? I only whistle when their backs are turned. I like to have them see it coming. So, Mr. Jordan, 
We find you here as a common thief. Yeah, sure. Take me to the police. I'll confess everything. Stay where you are. Now, why did you come here, Mr. Jordan? What do you want? Oh, I just found it. What's the fancy side racket, Doctor? Wholesaling narcotics? You will find none here. No, maybe you never did have any. But you could get word around that you have plenty of narcotics to sell. That brings the interested buyers to Egypt, all illegally. So when they're killed, it's tough to identify them. Jordan, you know too much. Let him frattle till he's through. Well, that's all. Arno handles the killings. A Mexican, a Hindu, and a Swede, all by the same pattern. You take their money and wait for the next. You even pick on an innocent Frenchman named Andre for the cover-up. Did he go the same way? You need never know. Quickly now, Arno. Okay, Dr. Shamar. Arno came toward me, his hands raised. He was three steps away when I grabbed the box and slammed it at him. The money bills flew everywhere and his knife dropped. I kicked it away just as the wiry doctor pinned my arms from behind. Arno yanked the knife from the desk and came at me again. Drop the knife! Drop his hand! Release Jordan at once, Dr. Shamar. Uh, Captain, Captain, he broke in here to rob me. Yes, 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 I heard everything, Dr. Shamar. Now pick up the money and bring it along. My men will assist you. The doctor and his pal Arno were cleared out in a hurry. I personally escorted Sam back to the hospital where he belonged. On the way, he gave me some good news. Andre had been found, still alive. They had just carted him off and dumped him out in the desert someplace. Well, in a little while, I was back at the tambourine where I belonged. I found a vacant table and had Chris bring me some coffee. Well, Senor Jordan, so here is where I find you. Huh? Oh. Oh, sit down, Count Umberto. Oh, thank you. Oh, I was hurt, senor, that you did not continue to follow me in the taxi. It was such a charming game. Sorry to disappoint you. So now the affair is over. Yeah, you can read about it in the papers. Yes, but already there are rumors about how you were led to the guilty party by a song. A haunting melody which people cannot get from their minds when they hear it. I, I am interested, senor. How does this song go? <laughs> you know something, Count? I can't remember. Superb flavor for dependable quality always. Enjoy Del Monte fruits and vegetables. Remember, buy wisely. Buy for flavor. Buy Del Monte. The brand you trust for flavor in so many good foods. Rocky Jordan. Written by Gomer Cool and Larry Roman, stars Jack Moyles in the title role with Jay Novello as Sam Sabaya, and is produced and directed by Cliff Howell, with original music composed and conducted by Richard Arunt. Remember, you have a date next week at the Cafe Tambourine, run by Rocky Jordan. Same time, same station. And the story is The Word of a Bishop. Now that it's shortcake season, why not enjoy one that's really easy and thrifty? Make it with luscious Del Monte sliced peaches. Mellow, tender, and full of tree-ripe orchard flavor. They're quick, they're inexpensive. Get Del Monte sliced peaches tomorrow. Larry Thor speaking. Rocky Jordan is presented over CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>